Sarazamai is an anime that condemns brittle connections and celebrates the bridges between people. Throughout the anime, we see the demise of those whose attachments to others only go as far as desire. All the Kappa zombies want something of their beloveds. Getting something out of being with a loved one isn't bad on its own, but as the anime demonstrates, there is a difference between mutual benefit and desire. That's why people like the Fishmonger and Catman are ultimately destroyed by the Ottoman Empire. Their connection only goes as far as what they can get out of others and, as is repeated to exhaustion by the characters, only those with real connections can have a say in their future. These characters and some of our main and supporting cast essentially at one point or another objectify those they claim to want to connect with. And not objectification in the superficial sense. Their desires don't treat the ones they supposedly hold dear as people but instead as objects or means to their desires. This is also why the otters tried to dispose of Haruka instead of turning him into a zombie. What he feels for his older brother is legitimate love. True, part of him wants to watch Kazuki run down the soccer field because Haruka can't join him, but there's genuine yearning for him to be happy as well. Just for Kazuki to smile and be connected with him again, especially because he can see how distant and pained his brother has become at the start of the show. The Ottoman Empire only values desire energy, and love is far more than just want. It's not cut and dry transactions as times of despair would make you believe. But even love can go awry. If you're not careful, you can end up like Enta and allow desire to win over your value for the one you care about. It wasn't out of love that he tried to sabotage Toei joining what was supposed to be his and Kazuki's inner circle. Valuing Kazuki as a person wasn't what drove him to prevent the golden duel from becoming a trio or what caused him to take the hope dishes. It was desire to keep Kazuki to himself and stop him from turning his attention to Toei, to prevent his beloved from thinking of someone other than his golden partner. And a specific situation is slightly more extreme, but I see this all the time, especially in me. I only have a couple of real connections, Kazuki's whose hopes and desires I adopt as my own because I care about them. But because we are so close and these connections are so few, I feel threatened when they pay attention to others. When a third party is around, I can't help but feel isolated seeing them bond with someone other than me. As though what we have is made less special by the new person's presence and our bridge may be temporary. Now, this is mostly baseless fear, but that doesn't make it any less impactful on decision making. I want to connect, but I want to take. Even more, as Sarazama demonstrates through Kazuki, simply wanting to connect isn't enough. The kind of link created all depends on how it was formed. You can impact someone for the better, like giving them the push to come out of the shadows and chase their dreams, or you can lie. You can put up walls while dancing the friendship waltz, only to find yourself still utterly alone. Kazuki can grant his brother small wishes like getting him a pet cat or giving him a secret friend, but after all of that, what does he know of Haruka? He doesn't get to hear how Haruka loves when Kazuki smiles and plays soccer, how he's old enough to recognize how aloof his brother has been and when he's sneaking around, how he sees their connection thinning as Kazuki keeps saying that he wants to protect it. He'd rather lie than give the vulnerability needed to truly form a bond. What's more is that Kazuki scolds the Bok zombie for having a secret that could get him in trouble, even though that's exactly Kazuki's whole thing during the first half of the show. There's a hypocrisy in condemning one person's secret while justifying your own because it's yours. And frankly to me, pretending to be an idol instead of talking to your brother directly as a way to connect is far worse than liking to get naked and put a box over your head. And lying often causes more pain than protects from it. Mabu didn't want Ryo to know that he would die if he expressed his love for him. So he thought the best course of action would be to lie. That just being near Ryo would be enough, even if he couldn't say how he feels. But all throughout the show, we watch Ryo suffering thinking that his partner was just an empty, emotionless husk. Being constantly reminded of what he thought he lost, never forgetting that their partner's in name only, and that their connection is gone. Might it have been kinder to not have hidden the truth in the first place? You can't connect if you deceive. You can't connect if you refuse to be vulnerable. You can't connect if you can't express it. And you can't connect if you want to take, like Toei's big brother. As the series continues and we spend more time with him, Takai reveals his sort of twisted views on connections. 
that you essentially need to be a bad person to continue living and that useless connections should be gotten rid of. He repeats this so much, especially in the episode just before his death. So much so that I can believe that he thinks he's doing his gang lackey a favor by killing him, and that he might have intended on doing the same to Toei when he said that Toei was too good of a person to be his brother. More importantly, he states this right after Toei says that he doesn't care how bad Chikai is because he's his brother. Chikai doesn't value connections or the people involved in themselves. He only cares about what they can do for him and the potential risk they carry. Another example is how he was happy to let Enta die in his place after he'd spent the afternoon protecting Chikai from the police. Through him, we're also shown that bad connections can still present themselves as true and beneficial. Yes, Chikai comforted Toei after he killed a man and assumed responsibility for the act, but he also used it to elevate his standing in the gang world. He helped keep Toei fed, but he also involved him in dangerous work. Chikai always sounded distant in their interactions, as though he always had other intentions even as Toei laid his bear. As though he was just placating his younger brother to keep him on his side. A part of him may have genuinely cared, but it never showed because his desires overtook his love. And even though love and connections will bring so many wonderful experiences, it will also bring sorrow. Sometimes you lose the one you love and there's no way to bring them back. Sometimes you will fight, maybe even grow distant. But the only way to prevent such dark times is to be outside of the circle. To never connect and confine yourself to loneliness and isolation. To avoid solemn things, you also need to never enjoy the ecstasy of sharing yourself. Think of Peter Pan. He never needs to grow old or worry about money, but he can never express his love for the girl he cherishes or be by her side as she chooses to live her life away from Neverland. Toei wants to never feel the sorrow he's experienced over losing his brother again, but that means giving up all of the potential bliss Enta and Kazuki could give him. As someone who has often chosen to be outside of the circle of connectedness, it's reassuring to see the consequences portrayed here because it reminds me that my decision is often unhealthy. When I resent my isolation, it is because I didn't want the dangers of connection and the only cure is making it possible for the people I will grow to love to get to know me. I can spend my days watching anime, but what will that mean if I can't share my observations about it with someone? No, happiness isn't a certainty. Even for Kazuki, Enta, and Toei as a group, but neither is sorrow. All we can say for sure is that there's probably going to be a mix of both involved. But choosing to have real connection means that they can also choose a desirable future. Why am I pointing this out? Why am I giving a rundown so obvious you can just watch the show and pretty much understand it all without even listening to me describe it? In part because I want to highlight what I find so interesting about Sarazanmai, and also because I think viewers are getting distracted from experiencing these highlights about connection. Yes, Sarazanmai is weird, and that's kind of what director Kunihiko Ikuhara is known for adding to the shows he works on. It involves a lot of butt stuff. A lot happens for reasons either not given or made clear until literally the last episode, but you also don't need an explanation of the series from its staff to get what Sarazamai is about because that's something it expresses so often in the series that you almost want to yell at the screen that you get it. A native Japanese audience probably wouldn't be as phased since many of what we consider weird comes from Japanese mythology, like the Shirikodama being sucked out from the anus, but I don't think it's impossible for an American audience to take something out of the show other than thing weird. Sarazamai isn't odd for the sake of it. There's meaning behind each animation and scene. You don't have to understand all of it to take away something valuable. Look at what I got out of the show, and even I'm not big-brained enough to fully get it. Like, what was the connection to Sada-chan's idol segments to the episode's desired objects? Why did her lucky fortunes always end up the things the Kappa zombies would steal in the very same episode? I feel the need to say all this because some of the videos I've seen about Sada's on my point out how weird it is and there's musical numbers and that's it. If the speaker likes it, they just say it's good. Not really why. The most you get is that the animation is beautiful. If they don't like it, the reason is typically because it's weird. There are some channels that have recognized that there's way more to Sadazamai, but not in the particular way that I like to express it. So here I am, making the kind of video that I'd like to see about the show I've enjoyed so much to actually keep watching as my time for consuming anime dwindled. Most of us want to connect, and we get frustrated when it doesn't go the way we wish. 
but we don't get a lot of media exploring the whys. Is it just life being unfair, making all the wrong decisions and trying to bond, or that what we feel is actually desire and not love? Sadazama does exactly that while also being weird, having good musical moments, showing boys kiss, and involving butt stuff. Next time you encounter a strange piece of fiction or art in general, after the wave of shock passes, make sure to analyze why it is that way. Much of the time, there's thought behind it rather than just trying to be wacky for the sake of it. Do you want to feel connected to my work? Well, YouTube's not going to help you on that, so instead, follow this Discord in my link. There you'll find a content stream of the things that I and some of my friends create, and you'll also find my Not Vampire channel where you can talk to me about my videos or just talk to me about whatever. Or if you're not on Discord, you can always find me on Twitter at Not Vampire. Thank you very much for consuming this video. Make sure to take care of your connections, and until next time.